Today's video is brought to you by eWin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our eWin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. Chris comes in with a question about BIOSes, everybody's favorite subject. Although technically I should, we shouldn't call them BIOSes because they haven't been BIOSes for a few years. Chris comes in with a question about UEFIs. That's why we still call them BIOSes. Exactly, because that's just, that's... That's a stupid name. It sounds like UFO. <laughs> might as well be. It might as well be. <laughs> okay, Chris says, how do I go about fixing a bi BIOS black screen? What are your suggestions? Well, hopefully you have a motherboard that has BIOS flashback because if you cannot get into your BIOS and most importantly, if you cannot boot your motherboard and your system just boots to a black screen. Now, there's not quite enough information there for me to completely understand. I am assuming that what he's asking is um, he tried to flash his BIOS, there was a problem with it and his system doesn't boot and it's just a black screen. Without a BIOS, you won't get anything. You won't get a, a startup screen. You won't get initializations. You won't, you won't get nada. You got a zero zilch. If you have, starting with that premise, if any of you have a system where you've attempted to flash the BIOS and it reboots and it just sort of sits there and laughs at you and goes, I'm not doing anything. Um, if you have a motherboard that has a BIOS flashback feature, well, you're in luck. So long as you have another computer handy. And the reason being is just having the BIOS on a USB thumb drive is not enough. Most motherboards with a BIOS flashback require that you name the BIOS something special. Sometimes it's just oh. BIOS.ROM. Sometimes it's ASUS.ROM or ASUS.BIOS if it's an ASUS board. Each company has a different specific, and here's why. There's one USB port that the system will pull to see whether or not if you press the flashback button either on the board or on the back panel. It will only check that USB port. It sometimes only accepts FAT32 formatted drives. And so if your USB thumb drive is formatted NTFS, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know, I have. we have dealt with this several times. We have. So you have to read the motherboard manual, which you can get online on their website, PDF. Does it have to be FAT32? Does it have to be NTFS? What does the BIOS file have to be named and very important point, sometimes you have to enable file extensions in File Explorer because if you just type in the name, there's actually a hidden extension you can't see. There is. Because Windows wants to put the funny long file name thing as opposed to the short file name. Fun times. Then, make sure there's nothing else on the drive. Then you can stick it in that spot. Then you can hold the flashback button. And then it should flash your BIOS. My advice, if this happens to you, Either download the old BIOS you came from. Exactly. Worst case scenario, we have had to do this before. Do you remember the X370 yep. Gigabyte Gaming K7? I remember, yes. That thing bricked hard. I tried the latest BIOS. I tried several BIOSes old. I did the flashback thing. I checked the FAT32 versus NTFS. I checked the file names. Nothing, not a zilt. That thing was toast. On a hunch, I downloaded the launch BIOS, which was a really crappy BIOS. The, the X370, the 300 series boards, you never want to run those launch BIOSes, they're awful. But I thought, screw it, I have nothing to lose. I downloaded the launch BIOS, named it, put it on the same thumb drive, stuck it in, pushed the button, voila! It worked. I, it worked. Several newer versions wouldn't BIOS flashback, but the launch BIOS would. So then we immediately took the latest BIOS, went into the thing, flashed it, brick. Oh crap. We re flashbacked. Am I loud? Pushing it into the ready. Yeah. I'm sorry, everybody. We re flashbacked to the launch BIOS. And then I downloaded most of the BIOSes. And then I went like three BIOSes at a time until I got to the newest one. And that worked. That, yeah, I know. That, that took a few hours. That was several hours. That was that was hours of 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 face smashing into keyboard. You'd think I was trying to type out the name of a new gaming monitor. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, isn't monitors it? Monitors are now called Jacob. Yeah. Um, now, if that's not your problem, 
then I would only be guessing at what your problem is because your question didn't have any more information than BIOS black screen. And typically that means your system simply doesn't boot. If you do not have BIOS flashback, and not all boards do, and your system does not boot and will not go into the BIOS, you have to RMA it. There's, there isn't anything you can do to boot a board that has a corrupted BIOS that doesn't either have a dual BIOS. I should, I should add this addendum. Some boards don't have, well, almost any board that has a dual BIOS probably has a flashback, but on the off chance that you have a dual BIOS board and some boards have two BIOSes with a physical switch on the board, what you can actually do in that case is you switch to the alternate BIOS and you boot into the alternate BIOS and then you can actually flip the switch back Ooh. while it's in the BIOS, it's fine. That only controls what it boots from. But when you switch back, it switched to the BIOS it writes to. And then you can flash a fresh BIOS to the original BIOS. I wouldn't mess with your backup BIOS while you're in that condition. If you don't have dual BIOSes and you don't have flashback, you're sending the board back to the motherboard manufacturer. He says, boots to Windows just fine. Just want to go into the BIOS, the screen is black. Well, now that's different. Here's an updated bit of information. So if it boots into Windows, but does not boot into the BIOS, it could be monitor support problems, try a different HDMI cable, try a different monitor. Uh, as crazy as that sounds, we've had to do that and it worked. Your cables might work at Windows desktop resolutions, but not your BIOS's resolution. BIOS's have sometimes funny resolutions and maybe your monitor and or cable don't support it. Another thing you can do is hit your start button in Windows, hold down shift, click restart. It'll bring up the troubleshooting menu. When you go into more troubleshooting, there's a restart to UEFI option, which will force reboot into the BIOS. Um, it could, sometimes you can't press F10 or delete or F2 or whatever it is fast enough and that just auto reboots into UEFI, at least on modern systems, not older systems. If that still doesn't work, you have a problem and a weird one. I would almost be tempted to, if your board has flashback, you might consider going ahead and flashing the BIOS that way anyway. Hmm and see, maybe go back a couple versions and then work your way forward. But if if doing the flashback doesn't, of course you run the risk, make sure your data is backed up, you run the risk of ending yes. up with a non-bootable system. I would not be inclined to leave that, something's wrong. Fix it or change the board. That's an odd one. He said he tried starting to UEFI, same issue. Something's wrong with the board. What video card do you have in the system? That's a good question. Do you have an, is this a system that has an ancient video card? Or? Here's why. Very old video cards did not have UEFI support. And the BIOS has to be in CSM compatibility mode in order to boot. If his BIOS has been changed to UEFI to support Windows 11, oh. and he has a non-UEFI BIOS on his video <laughs> card, because video cards have BIOSes then. too. Your system won't boot to the BIOS, but it may boot to Windows. 1660 Super. Well, that's your, uh, yeah, 16's, that's, that's your GPU, but your motherboard. No, 1660 Super is a UEFI card. That, would, that wouldn't have a problem. That wouldn't be the problem. It would be like if he had a, um, an R9 280X. Terrell said he's seen this problem with video output, had to switch the output. Change, right, change cables or yeah. change the plug you're plugged into the video card. Yeah. If I had this problem, if I could boot to Windows but not the BIOS, I would grab one of my portable monitors and plug that in. And see. And if that doesn't work, then I would just plug in a different monitor. Changing cables and changing monitors is relatively easy, assuming you have spare cables and monitors. How in the world people diagnose computer problems without a rack of spare parts? I get it. Most people don't have them. But... Having dealt with a lot of weird computer problems, I dread ever not having just like, oh, I'll just get another one because. He said onboard graphics has the same issue. Have you changed, has he answered if he changed the monitor or cables yet? No. I would do that. Tried three different monitors. There you go. 
I would change the board. <laughs> Something's Sorry. wrong. Something's wrong. Uh, at some point... Well, you might have changed the monitors, but did you change the cable? Yes, did you? Well, I would... Did you change the cable? Or did you use the same cable? And try both HDMI and DisplayPort and VGA if you have it and... Try all of them. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, regarding uh, somebody in chat just said replace the entire motherboard. There does come a point at where your life is not worth this headache. I have had this happen to me over the years. I remember back in the late 90s having a trouble system. Uh, it was actually installed at a client's place. We installed like a dozen different computers at, at this office and they were all basically the same hardware. A few minor differences of storage and RAM, but otherwise same case, same motherboard, same processor. They all had... Uh, they didn't have Pentium 75s actually at the time. I think we were using those AMD K6 or K5 chips, but whatever, same difference. Okay. And 11 of them were perfect. And it was actually the front desk girl's computer that was no oh. end of problems. That one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I must have gone down there three times in a week because, and, and, I, and, I, and I witnessed the problem. It's not like they're saying, oh, this computer doesn't work. And then I show up and everything's fine. We don't know what happened. Man, it wasn't working when you weren't here. Now, I went down there and I experienced the problems. And I, the, on my third trip, I just brought a whole new computer. And I said, here, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. And I took that damn thing apart and said, you know, you're just, you just, you just. You, sir. <laughs> you, computer, just hate your life. So you're going over here. <laughs> you're and they now. never called me about it again. There you go. That may not be the answer Chris is looking for. No. But there does come a point. Where? At where your whole weekend is burned over a $79 motherboard or whatever it is. Of course, if it's a very nice motherboard, well, that's what RMA is for, I guess. It is. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used eWin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with eWin to bring you this special discount and recommend eWin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.